All right, so uh, this is a uh, workshop for our legislative um, issues and uh, legislative priorities. Everybody uh, received the um, survey and I think worked through that. So um, with that said, we will turn it over to whoever's taking control and putting the stuff on the screen and chatting about it. So, Brandon, do you want me to start or do you want to? Yeah, you sure. If um, Tracy, can you? Pull up the PowerPoint, please. Yeah, we'll see how this all goes. <laughs> OK, uh, first, uh, thank you, everybody. Thank you for your patience and understanding through this. There, I just got off a WASDA meeting for this because there's was some other updates coming in and it's fast and furious, so uh, I'll give them the best that I got here. So an update, um, see that first page there? There's a whole bunch of helpful links about how to access the General Assembly, and they're all on that page, and I would encourage colleagues to check those out um, before uh, Friday type thing. Um, special topics where there's uh, videos done by the House Education Committee there. There's a student forum video. There's a budget video. All sorts of very helpful hints or videos for what the General Assembly and I, I, the, the good of all this is that. Uh, so, you know, this is the first time of a combination assembly. And first time it's virtual. And right now we have 188 school districts signed up. Um, 15 of those are all from our direct area of four. So the last record was 106. So um, folks are uh, taking advantage of this virtual. Still some kinks working out and ledge committee and resolution committee are have a couple of busy days ahead of us. Um, so uh, next slide, please, Tracy. Um, come down just a little bit. Uh, the other direction, please. How's that, Jim? There's a delay from when I do it to when you see it. <laughs> uh, OK, could you go to the page before this one? OK. But this page uh, we want to see is called Survey Construction Rules. And then, yes, so just to go over some of the background on this, um, um, the build of it, a couple of my other of our other colleagues in other school districts were trying a similar one out because really trying to outreach and uh, kind of try to standardize some of uh, the work. Uh, but I took the 2020 legislative position priority rankings, which uh, were I've been in previous links and then dug through them, verified all those items there. Um, things to remember through all this is the five buckets or categories, which um, start off with uh, learning, staff, capital, funding and then governance. And you'll see those a lot. Um, then I look back through some of our board assessment and goals at strategic plan, student input and voice, and then input from board members and community. And uh, that's how I, I built the survey. Um, I then went with those options there because wanted to, as opposed to having a number count, wanted to have some flexibility. Um, in that uh, if we 
got a lot of neutral and then do not support. For me, that, that means uh, some learning, training, education, possible workshops in the future. So that's kind of the lens that I was looking at. Um, but from there, I think this provides, uh, I got there a very thorough, I'm actually going to up that to excellent template to work with um, for 2021. Next slide, please. So the first section on the survey and then in the book, it's the permanent positions. And those are out of the resolutions committee. And as previously briefed, those are the foundational, the, the values based, kind of like the core values of, the, of our organization. Um, those don't require prioritizing, but they do require an annual review by the um, resolutions committee. And um, then uh, if there's amendments and new ones, then that requires a vote of the body. This usually previously occurred at uh, the annual conference when what was called the delegate assembly, which was a three hour. So now it's all combined. So uh, just to go back, there was 16 um, and uh, four of the six categories were reviewed. Resolution only reviews about uh, two thirds of their positions every year or legislative reviews all the whole suite of them. Which um, is growing right now we're at 148. Um, there was you can see the other stats there. And again, the permanent positions are not prioritized for legislative action, but they are they are used in uh, some discussion with discussions with legislators, um, but these are our foundational ones. And based upon what seeing on the survey um, would uh, consider a due pass on on all of those. Um, though I heard in my meeting before this that there might be uh, another what we call an emergency amendment coming in. But we won't see that till Friday. So, okay, next slide, please. And can everybody hear me okay? Just want to make sure before I yep. go on. We got gotcha. you. All right, now in the legislative positions. And then here's just another snapshot. It was on a previous slide. Um, all the work involved there or, or what we're looking at. And then at the bottom, I've got um, after reviewing the survey, uh, there's looking at uh, there's a strong consensus or we'll call majority. And um, would recommend a due pass on those. Um, but um, I have up there about the consent agenda and I learned uh, in my meeting today that that we probably won't have a consent agenda um, and we'll we'll be reviewing all 20 of those returning positions and um, for returning positions those are ones that don't have any amendments or any changes whatsoever just that uh, they're coming back to their uh, for consideration um, to become standing legislative positions and it's a uh, has to happen every year for four years until they can become that so so next slide and we're going to hopefully this will work um so i have uh my original intent was that there was three surveys going out but one combined the uh, board superintendent and students and then a sub and then there was a separate one for cabinet so right now we have uh, survey results um, from eight. And then on the cabinet data, there's two. Um, and let's see if that will open up. <laughs> As it slowly rounds up.
I don't know if everybody can see that on their screens, but I um, want to cover some questions that I got. There was, uh, and thank you, Director Ku, for these three that came in. So one is uh, it's a returning position, LP 7.1, point Bravo, point four zero, federal funding for civics. And um, what occurred on that was during the legislative committee work over the summer, um, it was slated to come forth, but the um, sponsor of that, which was a school board director out of North Mason, decided to pull it. And um, it was still on our listings, but it wasn't in the book. Um, so uh, it is it is no longer there. The other one was the school director training that also um, was pulled by the sponsor during the legislative committee work over the summer, was on the list, wasn't in the book. And um, but it because it had been just um, introduced, then uh, according with the was to bylaws, the sponsor can um, um, take them off the table. And and then the last one was the standard legislative position 7.5 alpha 81 local control. And um, that is still supposed to be there, but uh, it is not in the book for right now. And um, Logan strategic affairs team is uh, finding that out where where is it at, uh, but it's still supposed to be in place. And um, I'll know more by Friday. Um, so, Thank you. going through these, um, if you look at the association operations, and again, this is the permanent positions. And um, and again, take in mind that there's been eight responses on this one, but it does. Uh, we can see where it breaks out. Um, and what I said before about uh, a neutral do not support. So I see a neutral there. Um, I'll answer. We can answer that one real quick. So review of was just permanent positions and it. And that might have been answered by one of our students. I can't remember right now. Uh, but annually, uh, the resolutions committee has to review um, their permanent positions, uh, but they have to bring it to a body for a vote. So it's kind of similar like uh, you know, we, we go through policies, we review those policies for um, their current um, status, um, any updates to them. So that's that's why it's there. So. So again, the. The permanent positions do not require um, prioritization. So. I'll hold there unless somebody has some questions because I'd like to go down into the meat of the stuff, which is the legislative positions. But does anybody have any questions on those uh, four categories? One, three, and zero right now. Sounds like nothing. Okay, thank you. All right, so then we go into learning. Now we're into the legislative positions, which uh, do require, um, they need to be prioritized. But first, we have to go through a whole day of reviewing all the ones that came to the Ledge Committee that are being amended, clarified, new positions, ones that are um, elimination um, and returning positions. and. Uh, and again, they're all broken into these uh, the five categories. And if you've got this up on your screen, you'd, you'd slide there all over. So um, just remember some of these positions when I get farther along into the presentation, when we start talking about prioritizing. I think we're still on the, the first few. Does she need to, do we need to scroll down a little more? Uh, can you scroll down, please, Tracy, if uh, get to the legislative position proposals? Yeah, right there. Yep. Oops. Yep. Oop. There we go. Thank you. Yeah, I'm running it off of my other <laughs> screen, so sorry. So before I, we leave out of learning, is there any uh, 
burning questions on what that looks like? So should I go ahead? Yep. OK, next one is staff, and this is all about teachers, staff, funding in there. Um, first one up there you see is diversity training, and that's uh, an amended one, and it's also an LP. If it wasn't being amended, it would be eligible to move uh, just as a returning position. But because it's being amended and you can find what the exact wording is um, in your handbook. Um, there's always a, you know, there's a statement, then there's an argument and there's a, if it's a do pass, there's a do pass argument. If there's a don't pass, there's a don't pass argument. And with the whole suite, there's only one that has a do not pass. So questions, hot topics during the staff. Um, Director Stauffer. Uh, yes. As I'm looking at that, um, while well, I was looking at those first few to the, the fur further to the left, I see that there is one. No, can you go back, um, Tracy? Yeah, I see there's one that says diversity training, and then there's there's two more, and then it looks like statewide salary schedule is fourth are those it was it are those two center ones just not labeled because there wasn't room or is that actual data for something related to either diversity training or statewide salary schedule um that's actual data because we it yeah. should be actual that yeah because it okay yeah I just, maybe just the, the names of those two particular ones weren't able to squeeze in there somehow yeah it's probably I see when she oh, when she first over. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Okay. All right. Thank you. Anything so, else? Another question, and I guess just uh, asking about the scope of this meeting. Um, if we have, like, we do have one topic that I'd love to discuss. I don't know if today, right now, is the right time to talk about it, or if we're just reviewing the results in preparation for Saturday. How did you envision uh, that? Well, we'll go back. Uh, it's for um, the General Assembly is on Friday. And what I envision is that there, uh, as I had on the first slide, I have uh, some uh, considerations for approval. And um, when we look at these, we, we can see um, where there is a consensus. Um, and when we go to the other page, eventually, which is on the Excel, the numbers even come out. I think it would be the ones that are returning positions and which originally were going to be on a consent agenda and are not. Then I think uh, there's the opportunity to so that I know that I can that uh, that's the desire of this board for me to get up and debate that on Friday if, if that's the desire. Um, but um, again, looking through just the the colors right now and then take in mind we're looking at eight responses and then when we go to the spreadsheet it's just the five board members which uh, numbers are are uh, show uh, consensus in several areas also if it's and i see things that are neutral or don't support i would uh, see us um, taking an opportunity at a future workshop to actually get that particular item on a board agenda. Um, as there's a lot of work in preparation for for Friday still. Not to not to put anybody's that it's uh, not important, but there's a lot of work ahead. And um, the survey has um, been a good tool for all of us. So thank you. That helps. I think and I guess just to use a live example, uh, but I think I understand you is like the statewide salary schedule. I don't recall specifically how I answered, but I don't mind sharing that I was kind of neutral in general around it because I don't know fully the implications. Um, I know that's where we came from and there was inequity and I 
inequity is bad. Um, but so that would be something I guess the question would be, do you feel informed enough to be able to make a vote? Or in this case, would you would your action on this item for Friday likely be abstaining uh, from a vote? Because there's there's quite a diversity of responses there, which I love. Um, and I love the opportunity for discussion around it. I just um, and if I'm getting too in the weeds, definitely please push back. I'm just curious. Well, when I look at that, I know that a couple of our students are in the neutral there. Uh, one of our students just sent there about an hour before the meeting. Um, I still see two strong and three. Um, and Director Pickens, I don't want to put you on the spot, but I think that yours was a do not support, if I recall. Is yeah. Okay? Well, and and so if I could just interject, I don't I don't know that it matters who picked what in this. I think to to Brian's point, um, uh, because I I guess I was going to be a little agnostic to it originally, Brian. Um, I mean, this is a good example uh, of something that um, if we did have a broad a broad kind of diversity of the topic. Uh, would we, um, you know, stay away from it? Uh, my original, my original kind of thought would be, you know, getting to the the points that we agreed upon and seeing if there was anything contentious there that we would really need to maybe discuss, uh, um, you know, before before the fri before Friday, uh, just to make sure that there's nothing on the list that looks like it's going to make that lit, you know, that piece that. Uh, that that we may have some concerns about somewhere along the line. Um, <coughs> okay, that one is um, um, an RP, which was a returning position, and uh, um, it was going to be on a consent agenda. So I'm glad that it's not anymore, or at least that's what I learned earlier tonight. Um, so it does give you know, more of an option to hear more of the floor debate. And it's it's gonna be such a challenge with the, on the, just given the reality of the virtual floor debate for you all to hear. It's, uh, there's a lot of parts there, so. Yep, and uh, reading uh, kind of Director Ku's comment in the box, I, yeah, I, I mean, I like that idea, um, you know, with it's a learning process that we've, um, got better at each year. So as we get better at it, there's always, you know, items that we could look at differently um, because we learn more about the process. Uh, you know, of course, yeah, timing, time and timing is an issue, uh, um, but uh, definitely something to, you know, maybe look at as we, you know, as, as we move down the line and for the future, um, because there's a lot of issues here. Uh, uh, on the plate that, um, you know, and, and you've, you've attended the general, the assembly as it is, uh, for, you know, how many days of hours upon hours upon hours of going through these things, um, you know, uh, but with that point, there could be a handful that as, after we go through it, where we look at, Hey, this item seven to, uh, D four, um, you know, let's put that on a list to have a discussion about it before. So anyway, Mr. Chair, can I? Yeah, absolutely. Good. OK, and I and I think maybe maybe just this just to kind of clarify it as well. Um, and I know direct director Stafford talked about my specific position on there, which I'm I, I, I already had let him know. I certainly don't mind that one being um, being shared, but um, I guess I kind of question there because I know that there is there could be an opportunity for for us to um to share that 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 on certain topics of being able to pass credentials on so you know and that one in particular obviously i'm 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 i certainly have some some strong opinions on it but i also want would love the opportunity to share whether it's to this board or whether it's at the at the meeting on Friday. But I'm wondering if if when somebody goes to speak to an item or enters debate, 
are they then automatically representing the rest of the board or and so i think that's kind of the open question as to whether we would need to discuss that prior to me sharing some perspective on that if i was given an opportunity to does that make sense yeah it makes total sense and and i mean you know jim can ask the question better but uh yet to the point is you know yeah if one once you're handed the um the badge and speak uh uh on behalf of uh you know squim school district then your speak with that badge you're speaking for squim school district um uh as, as a whole and then that vote would be a vote from squim school district um if that if that answers that part of your question yeah i i think it does so in in that case you know that certainly would would be wanting to mm -hmm. be prior to you know because if the results as they were if i'm if i'm representing everybody clearly the results don't don't aren't aren't aligned with my own my own perspective on it so right. um so i don't know if uh this this speaks to director Ku's question if there is an appropriate time to to talk not there are so many of these we couldn't even talk to talk about right. all of them maybe maybe a few of them i'm not sure when yeah and uh, uh director jeffrey's got his hand up there no i'm not going to say add too much these proposals wasda will be uh, watching these as they as the late legislature gets started, uh, well, they're probably working now, but in January, and then a more in-depth discussion of the issue might come into play when an actual piece of legislation is being debated at, down in Olympia. That's my understanding. So, um, but I do agree this spread of diverse opinions shows that, uh, you know, we probably need to study the issue more but not before Friday, but maybe before the legislative session gets underway so that we can go down and speak to our representatives and the pro and con, I suppose, on what's being addressed. Because the way I understand it, something like the state salary schedule would affect SQUIM differently, possibly, than any other school, than the other school districts. And so we'd have our own take on it. So Thank you. I ask um, if it's a returning position, so that means it hasn't had any amendments to it. And so that would be a good time to place it on a table to next in uh, between uh, April to June is when um, individual board members and, and whole school districts can submit amendments and new proposals in during that window. Um, if they're if you're seeing a, a returning position and if there's if you object to the wording in it or or want the change um it's um that can be done um, but i would just ask my colleagues to look at those returning positions and and note that um none of them came forth with amendments um it's not to say that someone will show up, not show up on Friday and ask for a, an amendment to a particular one. But um, all the returning positions, um, the original sponsors were contacted and asked if they wanted any amendments to it. And uh, um, that's none came forth and that's why they're listed as returning positions with no amendments. So, if that helps with the conversation. So how about we move to category three? Is that OK? Yep. So this is capital facilities and school construction, and there's just four items in there. Then uh, any questions on that? No. None here. Okay. Um, category four, funding and allowance. This is another big one.
I'm not I too do, big one. It is just two pages, so. I do have a question here if it's in the right spot. Um, one of the big things that we've talked about as a board is the need for uh, essentially any sort of clawback to the forest revenue apportionment to the swim school district not be obviously taken out of our OSPI resulting in zero net benefit. I feel like maybe I saw somewhere there was a diversity of responses on that question, but the label I can't tell from what I'm looking at right now. So Jim, did you happen to notice that jump out anywhere? Um, I am finding the exact one you're talking about, which is going to be uh, under uh, do to do. So that one just got highlighted right there for us revenue apportionment withholding. Yeah, that one right there. So we have. Uh, um, it says so I see a strong support. Um, and again, when we're looking at this, remember that two of our students also. Um, and. Um, so there's eight total responses on there. OK, so I think I may have been mistaken on a diversity of responses. It looks like from the board, it's support across the board, except there was one strongly support. So um, my concern is assuaged. <laughs> so and when I when it comes to prioritizing ones, I would submit that that one should be at the number one of our priority. Mm -hmm. Okay, any more questions on funding allocations? And I and sorry, superintendent, I, I don't mean to put you on the spot, but there's um, superintendent, I had a discussion on Saturday because I noticed on some that uh, maybe he he was at the end of put doing the survey and uh, several do not support occurred and so we went back and he uh, sent me a updated listing and uh, we'll get to the one specifically that he um, did not support out and uh, superintendent if you want to talk on that one right now where's it at um it's under the uh do do it's going to be the remote and necessary school. So actually, uh, it's in the next one, number five. It's under governance, so we can wait for that one. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Superintendent. So let's go down to five governance, and um, so that first one there, um, where it says school director training, that one actually isn't supposed to be there because it was pulled. So you can ignore that one. And then as we go across, to find the one for this. And the superintendent has a uh, this is strong, uh, good update on it, in which it had slipped out of my lens. So if you can scroll across, Tracy, we'll find it. It should be SLP 7.5.A. Point five three. I show that one as the second one in. Is that correct? If, if you, I don't know if you can see my screen. Yeah, it's uh, is it real hard to? Uh, well, it's remote and necessary funding, I believe, and this goes back to my days in Leavenworth. I believe there's nine remote necessary schools in this state. It's either eight or nine. I'm not sure. I can't remember exactly. But there are some schools that are in extremely remote and necessary. And I use the one in, in the Lake Chelan School District that's in Stehekin. And last year there were six students in there to K-8 district, six or seven. 
uh, and uh, their funding was well over six hundred thousand dollars for those six students, uh, about a hundred thousand dollars a pop. And while I recognize that remote necessary schools may need a little bit additional funding in this day and age of electronic and digital learning, they don't need the levels that they did 30 years ago. And the funding for those schools is exorbitant. So, and for, thank you, Superintendent. So for me, like, uh, I, I would not recommend that for one of our priorities. And, um, and it falls under, it's, uh, it would be under the voting under priorities. It's not under the review section. It's not being amended or clarified, or it's just that it's a standing legislative position. And, um, and I would agree, it's not a priority for me. I just don't. <laughs> Yes. Um, so, if Tracy, if we can now go to the Excel spreadsheet, I think we're. Yeah. yeah do we ha do we have a listing of our top topics? Because we're we're down we're getting down to time here on this, so we could. Um, get well, what I can give you is on the uh, and again, let to help. Um, Two phases that you're giving me authorization to go ahead with uh, um, these ones presented. And then the next part is the prioritization. And that actually doesn't occur until the, the week of the 28th of September through 5th of October. But um, Tracy, if you can pull that up, that would be very helpful. I don't know if everybody can see that. Yeah. All right. Um, the yellow is a permanent position. So it, it just because it's all on one spreadsheet, that was, it was helpful to keep it all there. So you can see that. And again, this is just board members. So um, the numbers on the side help with um, how and give me some guidance of how to prioritize them during that that last voting section. Um, the other thing I would ask is that to consider items in one from each category type thing. Remember, there's five categories. Now, in previous years, I came to the board with a sheet of 40 recommendations. So that this is a change. This year, you had the opportunity to see everything. Mm -hmm. um, and if we went to our presentation, um, if we can go to that now, Tracy, because yeah, we're conscious of everybody's time. I don't know what that is. Huh. Which one? Sorry. Um, it'd be the PowerPoint. The PowerPoint. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, I no apologize. <clears throat> So scroll down to page, uh, I think it's six. A little bit more, okay, right there. Well, yeah, all right, so that right there, and I know it might be hard to see. So on the left is how I voted last year for our, our top 15. Now I went to there with a list of 30. Um, and on the other side, then, is how WAS does, um, how it all turned out after all the school districts voted. Um, I'd, I'd like to think about that, um, that at any given time, a, a, a priority could be higher over the, a position could be higher over the other. Um, but we have a slate of SQUIM school districts priorities. Um, but when I do votes at the end, I have to rank them one through 15. So the sheet on the left tells you how we voted last year. And if uh, you can recall the other two previous presentations at the last board meeting, similar, similar ranking. Um, last year, our top one is comprehensive school safety. 
Um, the school construction revenue is in there. Forest revenue apportionment funding is in there. A um, few others. And um, so that's. Um, then uh, if we move to the next slide, please. And then this is uh, then what occurs coming up. Um, and a listing of all the standard legislative positions that are eligible to be used for legislative positions are in that section three of the handbook. And um, those are all on this. Um, delete on this survey type thing. And then the next slide. And I got uh, consensus of legislative positions at regular board meeting. And what I mean by consensus is based upon those numbers. And uh, um, this is the workshop and the next meeting is at the board meeting. Um, but when you look at the consensus of how those turned out, um, for me, I see a pretty clear picture, but that's me. Um, and then I will be spending a lot of time of uh, validating where those are at. And again, it, it's good to always look at ones in each of those categories and not just think of, um, ah, we have 15 right here in the learning category. Well, we need to be thinking of those priorities in each of those categories. And we want to get we want to get SQUIM noticed. Um, our issues, um, our priorities in that WASDA calendar also. Now, they're all going to be in the slate of legislative priorities, the whole 148 of them. But when it comes from the to the day to day advocacy work on the Hill, um, WASDA will be looking at that first 15 that they get. Um, but then they're always going several layers deep to uh, find connections to bills type thing. So um, that's I got the takeaways there. And then if we go to the next slide, please, Tracy. And that shows is that where we're at right now and then what's coming up. And then I mentioned before about when uh, school districts and school board members can submit future new positions, future amendments, and that occurs during that April to June time frame. And then those go in for review by the Ledge Committee and Resolutions Committee. Um, and that's what I have from here. Um, Mr. President, I know we have about 12 minutes left, but then we go into board meeting. So how can I help? Uh, so I just just for clarification, I guess. So we're um, based on that spreadsheet. Um, is is it the the top 15 ish items that are on that list that are we're looking at as our priorities? Or. So, yeah. I mean, I, I understand what you were saying about, you know, categories and uh, and and those kinds of things. I, you know, I guess um, uh, I, although, you know, great opportunity to go through and look at all these uh, different um, uh, different uh, uh, things here, um, you know, again, as we fine tune and change and move uh, the the way we do this, um, you know, again, it's it's a little bit it's a little bit different. So I'm just uh, trying to kind of wrap my head around it, you know, whereas like you just showed our priority list of last year. Um, we don't specifically have that here, which 
you know, maybe okay. Um, just well, I would I would have that in my hand, and what I offer is that I will be looking at anything that's in that eighteen. 16, 14 points there on the right. Gotcha. As priorities. And okay. then I would be looking at items in each category to ensure that uh, we have coverage over all five categories type thing. Um, and I, you know, I can see ones right off the bat that are at 18. And um, that to me would mean that needs to be one of our number one priorities when we when uh, when it's submitted. Um, in previous years, um, the board allowed me to. He said, "Jim, give us a list of recommendations." So mm -hmm. that's when I came to the board with 40 recommendations. Yeah. And uh, this year we changed it up, and um, because we had more tools available to us, we had all this virtual stuff going on and um, all the caucus meetings that because mm -hmm. uh, just trying to get a lot of learning involved for yep. everybody. So. So um, I'd, I'd like to go to this assembly as I've always done before, knowing that I'm representing the, our board um, truly. And that's, that's the lens I always look at. I always look at the things that are in our strategic plan. I look how I will be looking at these numbers. So when we're, you know, we're seeing, what is that, a five, eight? So um, that tells me that's not a, that is not a priority for us. Mm -hmm. But if you could hold a second, Director Pickens got his hand up. Okay, I'm sorry. That's okay. Um, yeah, so question, I, and I, and I think I I think I understand this because when you talked about having the the broad categories and covering more than one categories, I think you covered it there. But I want to kind of more specifically make sure I understand. So um, let's say you have a particular issue that's scored very high, but it just you know because all we all support it and it all makes sense. But maybe that particular issue even though it's scored really high, it doesn't really pertain to, to SQUIM per se. It might make sense that that's not on our our top list of, of 15. And I, I don't know a specific example, but if it's something about, you know, schools and urban areas or, you know, something that might might just not, even though as board members, sure, we're supportive of it. It's a it's a priority just because we're, yeah. you, know, you know, student we want we it's a important for all students across the state to have but um y there are you, you can take some some discretion on strategically picking those those 15 is that is is that am i understanding that correctly yes so i'll, I'll go i'll hit a couple from last year's list so um first one the comprehensive school safety and it was a uh, a returning position and 7.1 and and one is learning so it falls in the learning category so that was our number one um, priority now i go on down to a um do 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 um forest revenue apportionment withholding it's in uh four which is funding category well it went in as number 12. Well, I would submit that uh, based upon what the climate we're facing, that I would probably put, I would put that up there at number one, number two type thing. Um, Cause that is specific to our region of what, you know, there's 87 school districts that face that. Um, so I, um, and looking over last year's list, uh, there was a lot in learning and, and learning also, you know, that's the focus on our students, which uh, are we meeting the needs of our students? So things like the McKinney Vento Homeless Assistance, um, that's um, the truancy BECA funding, um, those that's learning for our students. Um, so sometimes, yeah, more learning will get on there, but I just uh, um, need the flexibility to look, to look at the other categories and make sure that that we have a 
a broad a broad stroke um, through all all five categories, at Great. least. Thank, thank you. When we're when we're submitting to WASDA, you know, we can have our 30 list or 20 list, but that 15, what do we want to make a point at uh, at Olympia on? I guess would be a way of looking at it too. Great. And and then I need to advocate um, for those with our other um, direct area four. So I know that probably all of them will highly support the, the forest revenue, a few of those other things like that. So that's that's part of that conversation that typically occurs at uh, at Ledge Assembly. Well, now we're, we're going to have to figure it out via the the virtual, but. We're already doing that. Um, with I've been chatting with the other ledge reps and some of the other board presidents who are the ledge reps. So, so, um, so do we have do we have any other uh, pressing questions? Because we we're down to a, a couple minutes. We need to um, move out of this and and into our uh, regular meeting. Are we and are we? Uh, Doing that, Tracy, or are we staying here? You can stay here. I'm I'm going to stop and restart recording, okay. so you should be able okay. to stay here. It's fine. OK, sounds good. All right, so we'll get uh, any last minute questions um, so we can get a quick uh, break before we uh, start our regular board meeting. OK. All right, well, uh, with that said, the uh, uh, workshop uh, is um, adjourned and we will be back in a few minutes um, for our regular board meeting. Thank you.